so basically we are starting with our basics today very simple and for those who are appearing for cs1 r is very very easy for you all very easy and if you all are practicing r programming with me and uh, if as and when your paper a is completed and you are then moving forward with paper b as your chapters get completed in paper a do that in paper b then paper b is very very simple for cs1 for cs2 no doubt it's very difficult and it's lengthy right uh, but it becomes easy if you're practicing it every day right so this is one difference between cs1 r and cs2 r cs1 r is uh, the content is also shorter whereas for cs2 it's maybe double or that of cs1 obviously so that difference is there no doubt but it is very simple to score in r programming if you compare r and excel i will for in my case like what i feel it's easier to score in r programming rather than in excel because in r programming you have one thing very one option which is not there in excel uh, is that in r you can easily search for different options you can do that in excel as well but r it becomes very friendly the interface is also very friendly so it is very simple and you all have to practice every day if you are not practicing every day then you will forget the codes right and if you have those who are appearing for cs2 uh you may be appear to cs1 one year back so you might have forgotten many things right which is very natural if you're not practicing every day this is a coding language right so you it, it is a tendency that you will forget some of the portions right so it is very important that if you if you're studying two hours for paper a then one hour you will have to take out for paper b and paper b is something in which you can easily score above 80 especially in r programming right because there are both in cs1 and cs2 cs2 you get generally three questions in cs1 you get five questions in paper b so you can actually score a lot and it is scoring and uh, it is not very time consuming you can finish the paper easily on time if you, in fact you will have five ten minutes left at the end to revise as well in case of r programming just that you have to be regular the only way in which you can score really great marks is by being regular in paper b all right so from day one and also keep your concepts of paper a clear if your concepts in paper a is not clear then you will not be able to apply it over here right so whatever you are doing in r programming make sure that concept is clear for paper a and then only you are applying that in r all right so that is a very very important aspect and as an end of completing your r uh, paper a portion make sure you're doing that in r as well they right? both for cs1 and cs2 so today i'll be starting with very basic maybe we will be having five to six basic classes in a week uh, in this week and next week we try to finish up the entire basic portion so that we can straight away jump to the chapter specific classes right now here uh, firstly uh, why our programming so i have taken a few of the small
and when it gets uh, updated very frequently, which means that you have new functions, you have new packages in R coming up every month, right? Maybe every two months. All right. So it is also. Um, it is not the proper statistical language as you can say that only statisticians use R programming. No, there are many uh, other people in other domains in finance as well. People are using R programming, so it's very very interesting uh, software where you can actually perform programming language where you can actually perform different variety of tasks. Right. So that is one thing. Now we learn actually how to install R programming. One part which I think most of you forget over the time uh, because you have already installed our programming if you have your R Studio on your PC or your laptop so you are working on it and later after maybe two months if someone is asking you how to install you generally forget right which is a common tendency with everyone right so it's not a big deal we will be learning how to install and when we are installing it right now we will be installing the latest version now I already have a R programming so I will not be installing I will, I will show you all the steps so you all can follow through. For this stage only, you require proper internet connection. After that, you do not require any internet connection. But yes, when you are installing or loading any packages, now what are these packages? So in our programming, we have different packages for different functionalities. For example, uh, let's talk about CS2. For example, if we have want to do Markov chain, which is a model in uh, CS2. For that we need another package dedicated to that Markov chain. Right? Similarly, in CS1, uh, we don't have any such different package which you have to install. As far as I remember, we need one or two packages are there which will uh, be using some proper or uh, specific functionality. Other than that, in CS1, you will be using the basic R codes which are already inbuilt in our program. So, what are these packages? I'll be talking about that after we install the R. Now, there are two things that we have to install. Uh, listen to this very carefully. One is your R uh, GUI, which is graphical user interface. Now this R that we install is the, you can say uh, to keep it very simple, it's the basic version of R which you have to keep on your laptops. And then we will install R Studio. We will be working on R Studio. We will never use that basic R that we download, but it should be there on your laptops, right? So whenever you will see uh, in IFOA or in IEI, whenever you are going for the paper, they give you a few guidelines as to MS Office should be of 2013 and above. Similarly, for R programming, they give you the latest or the minimum version that you require. So they will give you the minimum version of both R Studio and the basic R. So you have to have basic R on top of it R Studio. We will be working on R Studio because it is a better interface. We can work in basic R as well. But the interface of R Studio is far, far better. So we will be working and doing all our classes in R Studio. You will be giving your exam also in R Studio. Alright. So uh, if you all want, you all can type down the steps. Although I will give you this PPT, so don't worry. And you need proper internet connection for this. Also one more thing. For some of you, it might take some time to install, download all these things. So I might not wait today in my today's class for all of you all. Because for some of you it might take some long, it might take a longer time. So what I will suggest is you all can write down the codes which we will be doing in today's class very basic. Otherwise, from the next class you will have this R downloaded, pre-installed, and then we'll be working together. Alright? Okay. So to download R software or the basic R which I am talking, this is the uh, site that we want to visit, which is cran.r project, right? So I'll just uh, click on this. For updating, no, for updating I can't do wait. So here what we have to do is if you are a Mac user then you will download R for Mac. If you are a Windows user then you can download this R for Windows. Clear? Clear? So I am a Windows user. I will be using R on my Windows. Generally for Windows and Mac it is almost the same. Some of the functionalities might differ between uh, as as and when we move forward, those who are using anyone who's using Mac, just raise your hand. Alright, quiz. Okay, so we have one or two students who are actually using Mac. So no problem. What we do is as and when we move ahead, there will be a few functions which might not functions exactly per se, but some of the functionalities might be different that we've been discussing. 
otherwise everything else is similar uh, all right so you all will download for M mac os and i will be downloading it for windows so i will click on this and in this way you all have to click on this and one executable dot exe file will be downloaded clear so i'll just click on it <coughs> this requires internet connection all right now here we have installed r for the first time so if you are installing r most of you are installing r for the first time so you have to click on this install r for the first time so i click on this and here we have downloaded r 4.2 for windows so the latest version that they are offering right now is 4.2 here here are you with me what i can do is i can paste this so you all just have to those who are uh, attending the live class and for you just type this entire website name on the search bar grand.r-project.org or those who are not doing it with me all you just write it down so all you just write it down who all are uh, downloading r programming software with me just raise your hand all right so many of you so what i do is i will look, go very slow so that all of you all are with me right are you all with me till here right on this download r and you will see that when the exe file will be downloaded let me check my internet although i have already downloaded this there on my laptop for those who are downloading please up click on this uh, download r 4.2 and you will download of are executable file yes
So basically, uh, I'll just stop this for the time being. For those, for those who have already downloaded, for those who have already downloaded, this is an executable file. What's an executable file? This is just a basic, uh, you can say, executable file which has, which I have downloaded. Now we have to install this on our PC, right? We have to install this on our PC. So this is 4.2. Earlier I had already on my laptop. I have 3.5.2, right? So this is a very older version which I have on my PC. This is 3.5.2 as you all can see. Right? Now the next thing, once you get this executable file on your desktop or wherever you have actually installed this, what you have to do? Download this. Now you have to double click on this. Just double click. And it will ask you, do you want to allow this app to make changes to your device? You have to click yes. Now, there are a few, just few basic steps which you have to follow, very few. Click on OK English, then click on Next, then again you have to click on Next and then here it will ask you do you want 32-bit or 64-bit. Uh, now I have picked on both, right? Those who are using a very la old laptop, you just untick the 64-bit option. You can use 32-bit as well, no problem. You can just use, I, I want to use 64 also, so I am taking on both. If you are using a very old laptop, right, so you can just untick the 64-bit option. Clear? That depends on the capacity of your laptop. I will click on next and then it will ask me yes or no, I will just keep it at no. No, except all the defaults which are there. And then I will click on next again. And the moment I click on next now, it will start installing on my PC. Right? I will click on next. And do you want to create a desktop shortcut? Meaning, do you want that icon on the desktop or not? If you want, you can click on, you can click on this button and click on next. Now you can see the files are getting uh, installed on my PC. I will click on cancel. Why? Because I already have this set up on my PC, so I am not installing it again. Do not install multiple times, you just have to install it one time. Download the executable file from net. For this step, you do not require any internet connection. Specifically for this set. So what I can do, uh, those who are sitting in class, you all can share it. Share this executable file which we downloaded through uh, pen drive. You all can do that, right? For installation, you don't need any internet connectivity. Clear how to install the basic R interface? Clear? I am clicking on yes because I don't want to install. I already have installed this. Now how it will look like? How it will look like? Go to the search bar and you will have to type R. You will have to type R G Y. Is it done till here? Have you all installed it till here? Those who are doing it with me? If not, I will wait. No problem. I will wait. Is it done till here? Okay, I will wait. No problem. No problem. Graphical user interface. GY. I will give you all the full form. Don't worry. Those who have downloaded, those who are downloading it with me, is it done? No? I'll wait. No problem. No problem, I'll wait.
is the R square pentagon in the exercise. What do you see? R editor. Right? This is the place where you can type in a course and you can actually save it. Now, for example, now for example, I again type 3 plus 8. Right? 3 plus 8, just click on enter, nothing will happen. Because to run any code in our editor, you have to click on control. You have to click on control enter. Sorry. Control R. Control R. Control enter is as well. Control R. Control R. The moment you click on Control R, see what happened. Did you see the answer on the R editor? No. We see the answer and the code in our console itself. In our console itself. Clear? So basically what do we understand after this? Our console will give me code plus output. Our editor will always give me just the code. Right? Whenever you write the code, you will have to enter, you will have to press Control R in order to run your codes. Nothing more, what, uh, nothing more we discuss about our GUI because we will not be using our GUI. This is a very, very basic interface and uh, generally people don't use this particular platform in order to perform our functions. We use our studio which is a much, much, much better, which has a much better interface. Here, 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 here. But do not forget about our GUI because if you are learning our program, you should know these basic things. Right? Here. Now, the next thing is to install or download our studio. Here, our studio. So, what are we going to do is if you want to again save this script, so when you cross, they will ask you if you want to save this. If you want to, just click on yes and wherever. You want to save it anywhere on your PC, on your de desktop, anywhere. You can just give a name and just click on save. I am not saving it for the time. Here, this is your R editor. Control N. Control R. You want to run the codes. Not required, so I will just give one answer. Cross. Cross. <coughs> no. Alright. Now, the next thing that we install is R Studio. Again, the uh, website is www.rstudio.com Right? So just click on this www.rstudio.com Here we go to products Here we go to products Then R Studio, R Studio. This is basically IDE of R. Did you all see this? R D E IDE of R. What is this IDE? Integrated. Now you can choose the version which you want to install. I want to install the uh, 
uh, free version. I want to install the free version. So I'll click on download. Again, download for Windows. Download for Windows. Those who want to download it for Mac, you all can just uh, move down and here we have Mac OS. Mac OS. Here we have Mac OS. Um, Manoj, it would be better that you download the latest version. See, you might have an older version, maybe two, three months back. It, the things are all the things are same. Just one thing is mis one, one thing, one place where your answers might differ is when we perform certain simulations. In those places, our answers might differ. So it's better that if we are starting with a fresh class, we should download the latest version of our Here, for OS, you all can just drag down and click on this. I want to download it for Windows, so I will just click on the download Windows for or uh, download R Studio for Windows. And see, basically, uh, what you have to do is just type www.rstudio.com. Right? There is an option of products on top. There's a, that is why I am saying it's better to write it down because your internet connectivity might not be very good, right? So R, uh, you, you have an option of products. Within that product, you have an option for, within that you have an option for R Studio. The very first option. Click on that. Then you have R, Dex, R, R Studio for desktop. R Studio for server. Click on R Studio for desktop. Then you have to select the free version and then you have this particular button over here. <laughs> Alright. It requires Windows 10 or 11 if you are using some older versions. I think all of you might be using Windows 10 because Windows 7 will not work in your exams as well. Right? So just click on this download our studio and then I am not doing this because I am not doing this because it will again take uh, 10 minutes so I will just click on cancel but what it will actually do is it will download again an executable file so I will just pause this it will download this R studio executable file here Right, so you if you already have installed, 
don't install it again and again and again. Now, one very common problem which I have seen some of the students facing uh, is that they again and again click on this executable file and they always ask me this question why it is again and again asking for install. Obviously, this is an executable file. If you are just clicking on this executable file again and again, it will always ask you to install. Clear? It will always ask you to install. So this is a very common problem which I have seen students facing. You don't have to again and again click on this R Studio because it will again and again ask you to install because it's a because it's an executable file, right? So after this is done, after everything is done, now what we have to do is here just click on R Studio. Just type R S and you will get R Studio app application. Here, here. Alright, click on this, R Studio. So it will look something like this for you all. It will look something like this. I will firstly increase the font size. I want all of you all to please complete it till here. Once it is done, just write a yes. Yes, Harsh. Just take on every option. Okay, uh, just select 64 bit. Yes, Rajesh. Rajesh. Huh. No, no. Major upload crash reports to our studio or not Major upload crash reports to our studio automatically. No. Hmm. All right. It is done for everyone to hear our studio. <coughs> I will wait for two minutes. No problem. Today we will go a little slow. I want all of you all to download. <coughs> now the next thing, first please see all of you I will increase my font size because I want to teach you all so it should be, the font size should be good. So I will go to tools, tools, global options, tools, global options, tools, global options, appearance, appearance I will increase the font size to maybe 16, apply, now it looks fine. objects 
that will be create that we will be creating. All those objects that we create using our functions will be shown over here in the global environment window. Here, what we see is <coughs> in this particular side pane, we have files. We don't have to worry about that. We have plots. So all the plots will be visible over here. All the different plots that we will make: bar chart, column chart, scatter plot. All these line chart. All these will be visible over here. These are the different packages. Now there are some packages which are pre-installed in our studio for you to use. There are some uh, packages which you have to install. How to install? I'll tell you all. Now you might not see. Uh, I have G. I have GG plot two package. You might not see this GG plot two package on your PC because I have already installed this package. So it's there in my PC, right? So for this, you will actually have to install the packages. There are some packages which we will be installing. Then the most important tab is the help tab. What is this help tab? So this help tab is the place where we will get all the functionalities, right? All the functions which are there in R, you can search for it over here, and you will get a good description of the entire function. What the function does, you will also get some examples. So it's a very very important part of the entire R studio. Clear? Clear? There is something called as history tab. Not required. You all can already see some codes which are there on my PC. These are the codes which I had written in past. So whatever codes you write, you will get all the codes over here on the history tab. Not required so much. Right? Now how to open a R script? You have to click on this plus button. Can you see a blank, a white color square box and a plus sign? So you just have to click on this. Do you want to open a new R script? So it will ask you R script. You can also use the shortcut Control Shift N, or you can just click on this, and it will open a new R script for us. This is an R script. What you see over here. This is an R. This is a R script. This is console. This is where we we'll get all the objects, whatever objects we create, and this is the place where we we'll get all the plots. So this R Studio. Is a much 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 better option than our GUI. Clear? For now, it is looking very blank. After a few classes, it will look very colorful because we will be making the graphs. Clear? Clear? Our studio that is this is known as IDE, Integrated Development Interface for Environment for. Clear? Is it clear till here how we have to download, how we have to run? You don't have to again and again click on that executable file because again and again it will ask you to install it, right? So you just have to search for it. R R S just write R S and you will get R S too. Clear? Okay. <coughs> so we have actually downloaded R S too. Um. Now here, uh, in our script, whenever I am typing any uh, function here, suppose seven plus eight, in order to run this, you don't have to click Control plus R. You have to hit Control plus Enter. Control Enter, and the moment you hit Control Enter, you will get the output plus the code on your R console. On your script, you will just get the code. Just get the code, and we can actually save this. How to save this? Click on the save button. Can you see the save button? Just click on the save button. It will ask you to name the file and the position where you want to save. So if I want to save it on my desktop, and we just click on save, right? We can click on save. Is it clear? Is it clear to everyone? Right? Any doubt till here?
we will be completely working on our studio. Right? So we have learnt about these things. Mm. Alright. Okay, so let's first discuss about packages and then we can move to the goals. So what are these two minutes? What is packages? What are different packages? For example, let's take a very famous example over here. Uh, I take, take a very famous example over here. Which I love my case. Okay. So for example, I want to perform a particular task. Right? Now these tasks are different always. Suppose in CS2 I am performing Markov chain. Sometimes I am performing some another survival analysis model. In, for example, CS1 we have EVCP model. Right? We have GLL. So all these different topics are there. So for different topics we need different functions. And these different functions belong to a particular group called as package. So here I have taken a good example where you can see that there are different packages, right? There are different boxes. These are known as packages. Different packages will give you different functions. What are these functions? These functions are grinders for us, right? Grinders of different sizes, of different shapes. These grinders are functions. The functions that we type. Clear? In that functions, you will have to provide certain input. These input are maybe fruits, vegetables. I want to make a fruit juice, right? So I will input fruits into my grinder. If you want to make a vegetable juice, you will input all the vegetables. Similarly, maybe for a fruit juice, maybe for a vegetable juice, I will be using two different types of grinders, right? So two different types of functions. Now these two different types of functions belong to different packages. So packages are something which are already inbuilt in our. There are some packages that we have to download or install. As in when we move ahead in CS1 and CS2, we will be downloading these packages. In CS1, I think we just have one or two packages. In CS2, we have multiple number of packages that we will be delivered. So all these different drivers are there. These are the functions in which we input certain. Uh, we have to put in certain inputs, right? Which is the data, the data sets that we are working on or something like that that we input and we get the final output. Clear? Clear? What packages are all about? And now how and where these packages are actually, where this is the save button? The save button is low. On the top left. Or you can simply click on control S. Saiga, is it clear? Top left. Can you see the save button? <coughs> From next time, if anyone is asking me at what time the class will be over, just wait and watch. Alright, so these packages which we have over, or have over here, these are actually stored in CRAN. Okay? Now these packages are actually developed by people who are working in R and suppose I want to perform a particular type of a regression. Logistic regression, for example. Now, for that, I want a particular type of function. I am creating my own package. It's a free, open source platform. You can create your own package and put it on CRAM. Right? You can create your own package and you can put it up on CRAM, provided you are so intelligent, you can put it up on CRAM for others to use. Right? So, others can actually use the package which you have created. So, what are the packages that we are using? It is actually created by different people. Right? It is not only one person sitting there and creating so many packages, it's not possible. So different people on the basis of different needs, they are creating their own functionalities, own packages and putting up, putting it up on CRAN for everyone to use it. Some of it are paid, most of it are free. Right? So what is CRAN? What is the full form of CRAN? Let's see. What is the full form of CRAN? Comprehensive R Archive Network. Comprehensive R, let me just type, CRAN. Form. Comprehensive R archive network. So this is the place where everyone who creates their packages functions, they put it over here for others to use it. So this is one backdrop also for our programming that you actually cannot rely on all the packages. Maybe someone who has just created a package and uploaded, we might completely not be able to rely on that particular package 
because it might not be safe or confidential for our use. But what we will be using in class, it is very basic. Right? Clear? Yes, Prema. Yes, 